So what you will see as soon as it comes up is on, the, on your left is my desktop. On your right is Lisa's desktop. And we're going to do a live demonstration of what makes ZPA very, very different using a legacy VPN solution versus ZPA itself. And uh, as long as the demo systems are not hung over this morning, the demo should go pretty well. And just to note, we're using my previous employer because it makes my life easier for the demo. But what we're doing here is true across any traditional VPN vendor, not just this one. Yep. So we thought we'd do it in, a, in a, a bit of a challenge. So the first challenge is connect to the corporate network, the private company environment, and load Outlook, something everyone does every single day. Multiple times a day. Yeah, many times a day. And we'll do it at the exact same time live. The only thing that's happened is Lisa has her VPN client installed, and I have ZPA installed. That's it. But the experience you'll see is going to be pretty different. So you ready? Let's do it. Go. So one of the things you'll note is that ZPA doesn't have a concept of logging in or out. Once, you're install once you've installed ZPA, you're always connected. And you'll see that, obviously, I have my email up and running because I'm, I'm always connected. There's no concept of logging in and out or off. Still thinking. Almost there. Watch the little green ball. Hey, here we go. So I think you won that one. Just by a bit. So we'll do something a little more complex. There's a couple things that are very different that are happening here. I'm getting access to my applications, but I'm actually not physically, or the machine does not have an IP address on the corporate network whatsoever, whereas a traditional VPN would. And so the next step is we're going to demonstrate that to show what happens when you connect a machine to the network, you're giving them a lot of access. You're trusting that machine to be safe, to be clean, to not spread a risk or a threat that may be on it to that remote network. And so we're going to demonstrate that in a simple way just by showing a port scan. This is getting a little technical, but it's visual. So Lisa and I are both going to try to scan the exact same network range at our headquarters. And you'll see that my results should be coming up blank because I'm not actually on that corporate network, and Lisa's seeing all kinds of information about the corporate network. I think I won this one. <laughs> so as a CIO, the next thing I'm going to do is try to kick Lisa off the network because she just port scanned the heck out of my corporate network. And Oops. you don't want to give users that kind of access. So what have traditional VPNs tried to do to keep the machine off the network to prevent things like this from happening? So Lisa's going to actually log in. What, what they tried to do is don't give that machine an IP address in that remote network. Make them reverse proxy to certain applications. Make them click on web links and go through actually a really poor user experience. So Lisa's going to actually click on Jira. And you'll see it's one, very slow. And two, often doesn't work at all. Whereas I'm still off the corporate network. And all I have to do is go to Jira. And I access it the exact same way I always would have. I don't think you can make me do this on a daily basis. I think that's true. So we can't kick Lisa off the network because there's a simple web app that doesn't even work through reverse proxying or reverse web rewriting as a way to try to quarantine or keep that machine off the network. Whereas with me, I'm accessing the application the same way I always would. So if I put Lisa back on the network, she's connected still to Pulse. Mm -hmm. So let's go to your favorite web page, Patrick. That's. Definitely my favorite web page if you saw yesterday's uh, demos. So one of the experiences that's common to anyone who travels is that you're in a hotel or an airport and you lose connectivity. The Wi-Fi goes down, there's some kind of interruption, you have to switch to your hotspot. And this is another case where the experience is very different. Yeah, so we're going to do a really sophisticated technical demo to introduce a network connection change, and we're just going to pull our Ethernet cables. You can keep us, lot, you can keep us honest, so I'm, we're both now physically disconnected. You'll see down here, we're going to actually make sure we are disconnected. I can't get out to the internet anymore at all. I'll just demo that real quick. And we're both going to connect to our Wi-Fi here. Just to simulate a network change. This is just you being at work or at home and going on the road. Or being on an airplane and having an interruption in the, uh, in the network connectivity, something we've all seen. You'll see with Lisa, her 
traditional VPN client has already prompted her to fully re-log in. Oh, my code timed out, hang on. This also happens too. It's pretty painful when you have a network change. And this is what we've all experienced on planes. It's been a nightmare scenario. With me, I'm still seamlessly reconnected. Private access does the right thing because it's not creating a full tunnel network connection to the, to the internet. Yep. So as you can see, if I had to do this every day, I would struggle. And to be honest, when we were rehearsing this, it made me realize I haven't had a VPN client on my laptop in 18 months, and I don't miss it. So I'm going to go home and uninstall this now. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a comparison of the end user experience. We'll just show two more quick screens on what the administrator user experience is, because it's important to highlight a traditional VPN solution is very network centric. It's looking at IP addresses and ports and protocols, and that's what it's reporting on. It's not reporting on users and applications, which is, in essence, you know, up leveling that to what a company or an organization really wants from their policy perspective. I've timed out, so let me log back into uh, to our. Uh, this is our actually our corporate private access instance. So this is live data. This is our live production cloud running, and you'll see right out of the gate. It's very app-centric and user-centric, which is what companies want. That's what you need to be able to secure your networks properly. You shouldn't have to be thinking about what IP addresses are involved in a, you know, a security policy or what protocols is used when they communicate. So if I'm on a traditional VPN console, admin console, I can see who's actively logged in. I can see what roles they were assigned. Sometimes I can see what IP address they connected from. But there's really a limited amount of information here. And if I need to dig deeper, I can go to the user access log, and I can say, OK, I can see that this person logged in from this IP address at this time. I can see how long they were connected. But I don't really have any visibility into what they did. You can't see that I was port scanning the network, for example, except from inside the network. In contrast, if I go to my user's dashboard, I see who's connected, who's logged in, but then I can pivot down. I can see which users are using the most applications, which users are consuming the most bandwidth, who's been blocked by policy. And these are all interactive. So if I want to pick on a particular user, I can click on one in my team. And then I have a real-time view of every transaction that that user did in a very graphical way. And it doesn't just stop here. I can actually go back to the dashboard. And I can visualize how these applications are connected to my environment. By default, we show things that are down. But we have lots of things that are up. So then I can end up looking at a particular application and say, show me how this is actually connected in my environment. So here is a corporate application, HipChat, that we see running on this server. Our two ZPA connectors can see it. So we're actually visualizing all this data in real time as well so that you can start making sense of it and have much, more, much richer policies in place. And one more quick thing here. If you click into one of the users yep. and you go into the diagnostics, yep. when you're actually looking at what that individual user did, if you expand the dropdown here, not only am I going to see what this user is connected to, but I can also see the path they took the performance on each hop of the path. So we're not only seeing the activity, but we're seeing something that'll help us troubleshoot the user experience as well. Absolutely. So I think we're done beating up an old school traditional VPN. 